<clears throat> hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Apex Pixel and today I'm going to be teaching you how to turn your static photos into rolling photos. But before we get into the video, if you're new here, definitely uh, feel free to subscribe. Check me out on Instagram. Uh, if you guys are interested in seeing some cool photos of cars, definitely follow me on Instagram and stick around for more. So back to the topic of the video. Today we're going to put motion blur into static photos. Now there's a few reasons why you would want to do this. Um, one is maybe you forgot to get rolling shots on a day or maybe it wasn't an option, you didn't have a second driver, uh, maybe it wasn't possible at the location you were at and you really think the angle of the car is really cool and you want to put some extra motions in there. Or, or if you're like me and you're just curious, I actually edited someone else's photos off of Instagram that I thought might look cool as rollers instead of static shots. So I've gone ahead and done basically what I'm about to show you guys. I actually used this effect myself on an editing challenge I did for Velve Auto about half a year ago, a couple months ago anyway, where I took a static photo and turned it into a motion photo, which you can see here. And this photo actually ended up winning the editing challenge altogether. There were a lot of great edits in that challenge, but I think the element of adding motion to a static photo really took the challenge to another level, and I think people saw that. So uh, yeah, definitely a good skill to have, and here's how you do it. All right, so this is the photo that we're gonna go for. This is kind of like the edit after it's been done. I actually have three of them open right now, so you can see a couple different ones Ones. These are of course all static photos and they are done originally by Paid to Shoot um, and it's of AKA Bodhi's Lamborghini Centenario uh, which was basically just completely rehauled by Bowden Auto House. So if you're familiar with any of those, uh, you definitely know where this photo is coming from. And if you're not, I'll leave links to everything down in the description below, so go check them out. Um, but basically, yeah, these were the original photos. I thought, for one, they were pretty epic uh, standalone static images, but I was curious personally to see what it would look like if these were rolling shots. So, all right, we're gonna take this image um, because I kind of like the lower angle and let's just start editing it. So basically, I'm gonna show you guys what I've done here so far. Um, obviously there's a bunch of layers involved, but that's just because, you know, certain motion blur is being applied to different parts of the image. Uh, so if I go in here and you can sort of see what each layer is doing, this is a wheel layer, which turns the motion blur on and off on the wheels, which obviously makes a big difference as you can see there. Uh, this one required actually a little extra editing in that you can see the back of the wheel. Normally if there's a rolling shot, it's usually just the sides of the wheel uh, that are shown, but this one, it actually had parts of the tire behind the car shown, so we had to add some motion to that, so that's what this layer is uh, and then the layer above this is basically just a mask to mask out everything else that I didn't want selected and it's going to be the motion blur for the background of the image. I gotta preface this real quick. These were done actually very quickly. I think I started at like 4 p.m. and then finished at like 5.30 p.m. The point is I put together five of these photos very quickly so one it's easy to do and two don't judge me by the quality of the work because these were done in literally like 20 minutes a piece. So here we go, we have a new document started. I'm gonna get rid of my background layer and I'm going to immediately command J and that's gonna duplicate this layer. I'm going to turn off the background because it's good to have a copy or a duplicate just in case you need to go back. And first let's apply the motion blur. So this is probably the most fun part. Uh, you're gonna come up to filters. I like to convert to smart filters so I can continue to edit them afterwards. So instead of going to blur and motion blur down here, or a radial blur if you were trying to blur the wheels. You're actually gonna go to blur gallery and go path. This will give you a lot more control over where the blur is applied to the image. So you'll notice you'll get this first little arrow but box thingy here. You're basically just gonna draw arrows in the direction of the motion. With, so basically you want the arrows going in the direction of the blur, not the car. So the car's gonna go one way and basically think about it as the car going into the blur. So the blur's going backwards essentially. So. You're just gonna drag these points to uh, a bunch of the leading lines in the photo. So this could be like road lines. Um, you'll see that I do it for from wheel to wheel on the car. And this just gives the blur a direction to put the, all the motion into. Um, I'll probably do one more up here by more of the horizon to show where the building is gonna go. So that's kind of there. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can go crazy and add a bunch of lines. One thing to note is that when two lines kind of conflict, the blur will wrap around in kind of a weird way, so you have to make sure you watch for that. But otherwise, we're just doing a quick example here, so that's all you would do there. Uh, now, the reason we have our smart filters turned on is that you can actually brush parts of the filter away. So this is an easy way to do it, or you can actually just use the layer itself if you didn't use a smart filter. Come down here and create a mask, and then from here you get your brush tool out, make sure it's on the opposite color, so I have black painting on the white here. So this is gonna make sure that everything below it 
will not show up. So this is the actual mask itself. Let's go back to the filter mask and we're just gonna paint away bits of the filter that we don't want applied to the image. Right, so this doesn't have to be super pretty, but basically just mask out any parts of the car that you don't want to have motion blur applied to them. And once you're done, right? And so to avoid doing that for a very long time, we're gonna go back to the original image, but basically once you're done doing that, it should look something like this mask here. And as you can see, it's not actually a perfect mask. If I click on it, you can see that I've actually have bits and pieces that are not selected, but that's okay because it's just gonna show up uh, with images from below. And basically that's just the background pumping through, so it's no problem. So now that we have our car completely masked out and it's only the background where the blur is being applied to, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is add motion to those wheels. Uh, so to do that, you're actually going to make yet another layer and we're gonna go back up to filter, blur gallery, and spin blur. Now with the spin blur tool, it's actually quite a useful tool. You just wanna line up the wheels uh, with the shape of the mask, which is pretty simple. So we can zoom in here and make sure that mask is actually perfectly selecting the actual wheel itself. And then you can change the blur angle, which is something I didn't actually mention last time. On the other mask as well, you can change the blur speed. Um, yeah, you can increase the speed or decrease the speed based off of what you think the photo needs. Um, another thing to note is when you're doing this, it's important to keep realism in mind. So things that are closer to the camera are gonna have the appearance of faster speed. And as you get further away from the camera, you're actually going to want to decrease the amount of motion blur. So perhaps the buildings in the background won't be as faded or as motion blurred as things in the foreground like the road. Uh, and this is just the way cameras and perspective work. So keep that in mind when trying to make this as real as possible. For the wheels, we can just change the wheel speed. 15 looks good here, so I'm gonna leave it as is, and I'm gonna add that to our image. Now, as you can see, this entire image is being displayed as opposed to uh, some of the motion blur in the background. So in order to get around that, we're actually just gonna use the wheel itself. Uh, so to do that, we're going to create a yet another mask. And on this mask, we're gonna go Command I to invert the layer which as you can see brings back the motion blur in the background, but gets rid of the motion blur on our wheels. So we're gonna go right back into that mask, the same mask that we have selected, get our brush tool out, change the colors so that it does the opposite and paints back in. And then we're just gonna draw this wheel out. So also essentially what you'll end up with at the very end of this is a composite of a bunch of different layers of the same image, but different things are happening on each layer. Uh, and that's what's gonna give you this nice looking motion blur effect. Cool, so I'm not gonna do it here for the sake of time, but in principle, that's the same thing you would do for the front wheel. And the last thing that we're gonna have to deal with here is the fact that we can see bits of the tread on the tire uh, and the way that I got around this in the original one is I made yet another duplicate of that same photo turn the layer on again go to filter create smart filters yep go ahead and back into filter blur gallery and then spin blur again and this one all I did was make it wide enough to where it covers the wheel tread and stretch it upwards so that you get kind of like this linear motion as opposed to specifically a spin. And that's probably good enough. Now I'm gonna press okay here and you'll notice right off the bat, this does not look right. So using masks, we're gonna actually go ahead and do the same process we did before create a mask, invert that same mask, and now with our brush tool, we're just gonna paint back bits of the motion blur that we want to capture in our image. Uh, and essentially, this is a lot of what I do in Photoshop, is masking and painting in and out objects. Uh, this is also how you get rid of objects in your backgrounds of your photos, which I'm gonna do a tutorial on as well. And so, the, kind of this is like a pre pretty basic way of doing what I'm doing. You can, of course, do far more advanced versions of this. This is just a quick tutorial to show you in principle how it's done and maybe you can start applying this to your edits. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, adding motion to a couple different layers, compositing those layers to make one photo and posting it to Instagram. So this is just a quick tutorial to give you guys an overview of what tools you'll use for creating fake motion in your photos. I hope this was somewhat helpful and if it was unclear, definitely let me know in the comments or hit me up on Instagram and I can help walk you through the process a little bit further. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Congrats, you now know how to create motion blur in your photos and hopefully this helps you guys out in the future. So if it does, let me know. If you actually end up putting fake motion blur on your photo and posting it to Instagram, please let me know by tagging me in the photo. I'd love to see it. If you guys found this helpful, give it a like. Maybe subscribe if you're interested and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and have a good day.